The arrest of two black men at a Philadelphia Starbucks in April raised a lot of questions about how companies train their employees to avoid racial bias. A recent Harvard Business Review study found discrimination is prevalent in the customer service industry. The study discovered hotel employees gave a 20% more restaurant recommendations to white people than to black or Asian people. It also says race affects employees' politeness. WCBS anchor and CBS News contributor Maurice Dubois' name is here to show us how a chain of restaurants in the Washington, D.C. area is tackling this issue. This is very interesting to a lot of people. Maurice, good morning. Good morning to you. Thank you all. And uh, good morning, everyone. Busboys and Poets is a restaurant and bookstore chain that employs about 650 people across six locations in Washington. For the past 13 years, restaurateur Andy Shalal has been conducting his unique brand of racial bias training for his employees. We recently attended a training session with a group of 10 millennials. We met in a room after, uh, named after Langston Hughes, the renowned poet, who was once a busboy. Can you be colorblind in America? No. no. Oh. Being colorblind is like completely rejecting somebody's culture and who they are and how they are. This is kind of my headquarters. because I live Race has perplexed artist turned restaurateur Andy Shalal since he first came to America in 1966 as a 10 year old Iraqi refugee. My family lived in Virginia and back then I was introduced to race in America. It hits you right in the face. Absolutely, because I was a small boy with an afro and darker skin. Sometimes thought I was black, some people thought I was white, some people thought I was who knows what. And what does a kid make of that? It's confusing, because I didn't know anything about race. Shalal set out to create a community where people of different cultures and races could interact. He shares his vision with employees every couple of weeks at anti-bias trainings. For a lot of white people, for instance, I always hear them say that I'm colorblind. Like that's the ultimate, the ultimate space to be in, which means that you don't see color and therefore you don't have any racism or prejudice in your bones. That's it. Uh, is, is that possible? <laughs> when saying you're colorblind, it's like you don't really see me. It's not to be colorblind, your goal should be more to see me, see my culture and appreciate that. How does race impact the way you serve? For me, I'm not going to say race doesn't exist. It does. But I bring my same attitude to any table that I go to. When, let's say, a host at the front door, it's a Saturday morning, we just open the door. Let's say the entire space is open at that moment in time. So the hostess wants to seat people according to sections. So the black couple walks in through the door, they walk through an entire empty restaurant, and they get seated in that back corner. What is the black couple thinking? You put them in the back. Yeah. Why, why are you sitting in the back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had that happen to me. Yeah, like, yeah, you shot me by the bathroom. I was going by the rotation, uh, and this server had gotten in. They were like first in, and they yeah. hadn't gotten the tables yet. So you just set them randomly at the next table. But what you have to do is explain. You have to keep the lines of communication open, because if you don't, then people will think that's this, it. and that's yeah. what you know. Now, let me ask you this. Let me go back to my example. What if a white couple walks in, and they get seated in that back corner? What's the white couple thinking? They got the whole room to ourselves, honey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what does the uh, hostess look like? Oh, it depends what the hostess looks like. Everyone reads the book by its cover, no matter what you think. I was having this conversation with a gentleman the other day um, in the Uber ride <laughs> on the way to work. And he said, why is being black different than being any other race? or any other color. Was he black or was he? He was black. Uh -huh. And I was like, because they can see us coming. Uh -huh. like physically, yeah. you can see us coming and you can make your perception from mm -hmm. there. What about main takeaways here? How are you gonna change the way you do your job? To me, this discussion is a mindfulness exercise. It's an invitation to be deliberate and to not sink into the biases that I have built up over many years. And it's a reminder to practice compassion. What are you gonna do the next time you run into an ugly situation? My first thing is always to question someone because to question someone is to take that next step or open that door. Yeah. You gotta one, first be aware that there is a bias in order to like, you know, fix it. And they probably didn't even know they were doing it. You know what I mean? Anybody think, well, this is a nice discussion, but people are people, they're gonna be who they are, and nothing's gonna change. I think that when you were hired here, you've already demonstrated that your mind is open enough to accept other people's experiences and learn about them and about yourself. So 
I think what I'm hearing you say is that the people who need to hear this aren't here right now. I do think that we need to bring this conversation to a wider audience. Like, we could all have these ideas, but to want to go out and physically start the conversation, that's the hardest thing to do. Is the word as simple as respect? Is that all it is? Yeah. Respect other people? I think the biggest, biggest problem, at least in America, when it comes to race relation, is like recognizing just like where we are as a person and as a people uh, to, to figure out exactly how we fix the problem. Now, Shalal acknowledges these conversations are just the first step, not the solution necessarily. Shalal has a history of being politically active. He ran for mayor of Washington in 2014. He now sees these training sessions as a way of creating change in his small corner of the world. It's so interesting. I love the example about being seated in a restaurant. A black couple would think, why are we back here when there's all those empty tables? And a white couple may think, great, we have it all to ourselves. That is so true. It's all about perception, right? It is. What was it really is. interesting to me is this is a group of millennials. Uh -huh. This session went on for a whole afternoon. Yeah. Nobody looked at their phones. Ah. Everyone wanted to talk and be heard on this topic, so yeah, there like seems it. to be a real thirst out there. God, that's to think this. of it mindfulness. mindfulness. That right. was I very, like very, that. very nice. Maurice. Nice to done. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you.